Welcome to seminar number six on church planning. My name is Irfan Velasquez, and I'm an archaeologist and the president of the Inter-American Adventist Theological Seminary. We're going to be discussing on developing a purpose-driven model for youth ministry in the local church. What do we want to accomplish? We want to see how, how to make a plan for a yearly model and then implement the key AYM objectives with these four New Testament dynamic areas, grace and discipleship, community, service, and worship. What is our primary focus is Jesus, Jesus and his method. What we want to do is to align these plans that we want in the local church with the ones that we have in the conference, the union, and the division. So it's going to be fun because we want to uh, make this work, not only models and, and different uh, graphics that we can see, we want to make it happen. Reaching up, reaching out, and reaching in. Remember, our model is Jesus. Following, following Jesus' purpose is a sustaining yearly model that must be based in him. And his method, his method is the best. Uh, you have to realize that, that Jesus had a mission. He did not come just to stroll through the uh, streets of uh, Judea. He came with a purpose and it was practical. And we need that you as youth leaders, you have the same sense of urgency that you are up to something. There's a mission that Jesus wants you to do as he had his own mission. Of course, you have to have that connection with heaven. You cannot depend on yourselves. You must depend in the Almighty. And of course, as the Christians in Pentecost, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. We have, we have challenges, of course. Many times we run out of gas because we don't know what to do after April or May. But here, you can have some tools, some tools to make sure that you can have enough fuel for the rest of the year. And remember, I'm going to present only suggestions to your own. These are just models that, that we want to share with you. And remember, those guidelines are that, guidelines, not laws. I will suggest that you begin with a SWOT analysis. There are different types of analysis of, or inventories, but in this SWOT, you have strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. In strengths, you want to know what is your youth group good at? You want to know their gifts, so have an inventory. How many financial resources do you have? If you have talented singers or writers or computer geeks, whatever you need or whatever you have. Then how about the opportunities? The opportunities are a school, perhaps a university close by, uh, migrants are coming, who knows? How about the weaknesses? Assess uh, that you perhaps have not a lot of support for the pathfinders, or perhaps the, the internet signal is weak in your church location. So you must be aware of that. How about threats? Uh, is the church located in a place that is dangerous at night? How about a financial recession in your country? So you have to be aware of those uh, four areas before beginning. Of course, Jesus taught us, and he was an example, on four dynamic biblical forces. First, it was personal spirituality and discipleship. Jesus fostered that kind of unity among his disciples. Second, community. That community that was a bond developed not, not overnight. It took time. And then service and mission. He sent them out so they could preach and heal and take care of those who were in need. And when we go to the book of Acts, we find the worship experience. They were together in that upper room and they were experiencing worship, meaningful worship. 
So uh, Barry Gain, he summarizes Paul's uh, dynamic uh, biblical principles on grace, service, community, and worship. Now, let's see how we can translate that into works. We want to make a plan here. And this is a very nice graphic. You can see it perhaps later uh, closer, but let's see the first one. Again, these are just examples. In the area of mission, let's have a goal. For example, practice creative evangelism. And then you can have reaching out SDAs or uh, friendship evangelism, something unique, something that you can uh, go out, go out for others. How about worship? Well, in worship, you can have a goal like uh, leading, leading toward a deeper worship experience. And how you can do that? Let's do that with developing a praise team, or you can begin a meaningful media ministry. Those are things that you can do on, on the worship area, that second element. How about community? In community, you can have several goals, but again, try to focus on just one. One for each area for the first year. You don't want to be over overwhelmed with many goals and then how you can reach them. So please, just one, one per area. Uh, you can foster closer relationships among youth. Then how? Well, develop small groups or perhaps an intentional social media ministry. That's something that you can do to develop community. How about discipleship? In discipleship, you have that Luke uh, 6, 12 area of uh, that personal spirituality and discipleship is based on grace. How do you do that? The youth will mature their faith experience. How you will do that? <laughs> More specifically, something that you can measure. Well, energize for your life and a deeper Bible study. Uh, perhaps you can do that through the uh, GEAR plan or the Sabbath School Quarterly or a specific book that you want to study. And, and you can practice that, practice that. And lastly, but least, is service. Service is the ultimate objective. And you can do service like developing ministries with people in special needs. You can serve those people in specifically with sight disabilities or sign language, something that, that you can do particularly based on the gifts. Don't try to do this if you don't have somebody gifted in that area or you don't have that need in that area. Just because you like it doesn't mean that you have to do it. So what will specifically happen is something that you have to write it down. Who will take care of it? When? How much it will cost? How it will be assessed? How can it be improved? Uh, results of the SWOT are basic for that, the target and the resources. So you can do a simple table like this one where you have the, that uh, goal that you have put in Mount Zion Church or uh, Jerusalem Church, the, the church that you belong. And then you have that aim, develop ministries with special needs. Uh, how do you do that? Well, you have uh, bringing resources, for people who are legally blind. You can do it with people who are deaf or something else. And then you have to align that with your own uh, division or union or conference. What are the plans that these other entities have? Uh, strategies, then bring books or find technology or what have you. Place dates, not only for the first month, for the whole year. And then you can revise those Every trimester, every trimester you can revise those. Uh, who's responsible? Joe, Maria, Carlos, whoever. You must know how much that will cost. Don't go overboard uh, and you have to be aware of your limits. And then how you're going to uh, assess uh, the evaluation on that activity. So the meeting model, it's our weekly meet meetings. It's an event, it's important that our Fridays uh, or Saturday afternoon, uh, you can have a, an event uh, with a specific target, uh, non-Adventists, Adventists who are just nominal, and the committed Adventists that you should have something deep for them too. So in your target, you define 
the nature of your programming. What are the re relevant themes? You assess that in your SWOT analysis. They are interested into superheroes or into uh, sex, into school, into stewardship, who knows? Let's make it attractive, engaging, and use a variety of methods using, of course, technology and being purposeful. Uh, how do you do that? Well, try to be creative. And there are many ideas that we can share with you. Try to do it relationally based, not just dry, even though it's very professional, but it's dry. Make it something that it's warm, that they can feel that they belong. They must be. I cannot emphasize this enough. As you see behind me, I am grounded on archaeology. So make it based on the Bible, practical Bible teaching, and involve others. And of course, prayer, 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 beginning to end, prayer. Meetings are generally constructed around a theme. You can choose a theme for the first month, for January. It could be uh, the book of Matthew. It could be justification by faith. It could be health. Just try to pick up a theme based on the needs. Remember, not on your, uh, on your gifts or your wants, based on the needs that they have. And of course, in what the Bible tells us that are important needs. Uh, make a formal presentation. You can do a debate. Uh, you can do something that break out in small groups or perhaps a musical meeting based on a theme. Uh, you can role play uh, or different groups can role play too and then have discussions, a drama, worship and prayer, a short video presentation, not too long, but something that, that you can discuss afterwards. And why not? Zoom. Zoom with another uh, AY group uh, or a leader that it's elsewhere. And using technology, you can use Kahoot or several other tools that you can uh, do certain creative ways of uh, engaging the, the young people into studying the Bible. So these four biblical forces, let's see how we see them in another way. We can see, the, see them going up, going up. For the love of Christ compels us, this personal spirituality. We can see it reaching in for everyone shall know that you are my dis disciples if you love one another, community coming in. Then reaching out, service, service as mission, the gospel to all the world in my generation. And then you can do it in personal evangelism, reclaim and others. This is the picture, the big picture that we want to have in this reaching up reaching in and reaching out. Remember the challenge that Joshua received. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. May God bless you and keep you.